Hi everybody, welcome to the second video for Dressing Dawn. Today I'm going to do the first video in a multi-part series of selecting items for a small wardrobe. So as some of you may know if you follow me on Instagram, about a year ago I actually started to minimize my wardrobe. And my whole point in doing this was creating a seasonless capsule of quality items that I could use to most maximize my wardrobe. So at the time when I was minimizing, as things were moving out of my wardrobe, items that were less quality, things I didn't wear, things that I chose that didn't mix well with other items in my wardrobe, I decided that any time that I would purchase something new that I had to be very selective and there was a lot of things that went into consideration before I allowed a new item to come into my closet. So today is going to be the sweater edition and I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that I would look for to allow something new to come into my closet. I'm going to do this across varying price points because I think that this is something that everyone can do no matter what your budget is. There's just certain things that are worth looking for in an item that help it be more quality and something that you know is like made to last or special or something that you would want to actually choose to allow it to come into a much more curated wardrobe. So if you want to see the sweater edition, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to start with a store that we're all super familiar with, Target. Target has a, it's not really new, I think last spring they started this line, this universal thread line. And I am just as guilty of, as everyone else of going into Target, getting a Starbucks, and just spending time wandering around the store while I'm getting my groceries, while I'm getting snacks. You know, if, if we need anything in my household, we probably run to Target, sometimes multiple times a day. So it's very easy to get drawn into the lines that they carry there. Um, this one in particular, I think in the beginning, I felt had a very made well feel, um, which really drew me to it because I definitely like the aesthetic of made well and the style. But I found that as I looked around at the pieces that were included in that line, it was really easy to find some pretty decent items. So more recently, I found this sweater. This is kind of a little bit of a trendy color, like this mustard color. And the nice thing about, so the first thing I would look for in a sweater, and my husband actually made, started making fun of me, he called me like fabric snob, but I definitely would look at the fabric content. So this sweater, for example, is 100% cotton. Anything with acrylic basically is just a no for me. I don't like the way acrylic washes or wears, and acrylic is actually, I mean, just like it sounds, it's a plastic. So you definitely, as you wash them, which sweaters you don't wash as often, but you get, you're get you dealing with microplastics, and I just don't like the feel of acrylic, although it does make things softer sometimes, and there can be very soft to the hand acrylics. It's just not a quality product, and it's not something that I want, would want to actively choose to put in my closet. So I look for mostly natural fibers. 100% cotton sweater at Target, is you know something that I would probably look at more closely. So this sweater also has some really nice details with the rolled edges on the sleeves and it's got a little bit of a texture in the weave. Um, and it is, the sweater was $24.99. So that's really a great deal for a 100% cotton sweater. Natural fibers that you know are going to wear well and last and are honestly better for the environment. So, for $25, you can get a 100% cotton sweater. That's something that's a good piece to add to a small wardrobe. There's some really nice details on this sweater. So I'm gonna give you some close-ups and go a little bit more into what are those details that I would be looking for. So really the first thing that drew me to this sweater was the color. And I really do like this basket weave knit that has more of a loose feel where in between the rows you can kind of see through the sweater. And then it has these rolled cuffs that I mentioned. Just really nice change in stitch. It gives it a little bit more of a casual feel to the sweater. But the texture is certainly, certainly there. It 
it's just a lovely kind of loose lighter weight knit and there's the rolled edge at the hem as well and like I said previously the fact that it is a hundred percent cotton is one of the key features for me that would make this a keeper point I'm going to talk about is more of a mid-range price point maybe even a little on the higher end um, but for the things that I would consider and where I would shop it's more mid-range in at least in the aspect of an item like a sweater so I'm going to talk about Madewell um, I work at a mall that has a Madewell and I am also guilty of stopping there fairly frequently I love Madewell and as I've said in previous videos, I feel like their denim is phenomenal for a curvy body. Probably 90% of my denim is Madewell. So I'm pretty friendly with the people at my local Madewell and um, yeah, like I said, I visit them pretty frequently. So on a recent stop, I did see this sweater and this was after I had already picked up the Universal Thread sweater from Target. So I wouldn't keep both sweaters. So I'm going to preface this by saying I would do some investigating and determine which one fit my needs the most, but this is a great example of how you can find the same thing at varying price points. This is also a 100% cotton sweater. Um, you can tell just by the weight of this one. You can hear my dog whining. I'm really sorry. Um, you can tell by the weight of this one that just the fibers are much thicker. The sweater itself is a little bit more of a tighter knit, definitely has a lot of that texture and it's got some really nice details like these balloon sleeves that would make me pick it up and consider it. So I'm going to also do some close-ups of this guy and I'm going to explain to you some of the details on this which is would be why I would consider it. So while the Universal Thread sweater was $24.99 for a 100% cotton sweater, this one here is $88 and also a 100% cotton sweater. So again, with this sweater, the first thing that drew me to it was obviously the color, which is very similar to the Universal Thread sweater. You can see that the stitch is more of a standard stitch, a little bit tighter, and here's a close-up of the balloon sleeves that kind of go into a ribbed knit cuff that's tighter at the wrist, which gives the sweater a really unique style when it's on. And then it has this change in stitch that moves across down the side of the sweater and across the front body of the sweater which also, again, adds some more texture and a little bit of a unique look. The sweater also has a small slit in the side at the waistline, kind of making it a little more free-flowing, which I kind of really like on this sweater. Again, this is also a 100% cotton sweater. to compare in the small wardrobe sweater edition is another 100% cotton sweater. There are some differences to this one. This sweater is by Veronica Beard. So this is something that I found at Nordstrom one day when I was out shopping. I had at this point decided that I was going to go clean slight, definitely looking at more ethical brands and picking like the dream items that I want for my wardrobe. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I basically set a budget and said, within this budget, if I could pick items to fill my, create my complete dream wardrobe, what would I choose? And basically what I was doing was purging my closet and starting over. And this sweater happened to be a one and only on a rack in Nordstrom while I was looking at Eileen Fisher and took it in the fitting room and tried it on and it was basically love at first sight. 
So obviously one of the main things you'll notice about the sweater, it's not mustard yellow, but it does have that yellow in it. It is a very heavy, tight knit with the texture kind of like that Madewell sweater and 100% cotton as well. There's also some details to this that make it super special and that would be why I chose this sweater. This sweater kind of has become the pivot in my wardrobe, kind of like the key item that I'm building around right now um, and something that I feel like I'll have for a very long time. And in complete transparency, this is not a, a price point that I would normally pay, but sometimes there's just something about it. And for this, there was just everything about it absolutely fit where I wanted my wardrobe, the direction I wanted my wardrobe to head in. So this Veronica Beard sweater it was $375. Um, and I'll show you some details about why I chose that. I don't have any guilt at all for that price point for a sweater like this that I know is 100% cotton. It has that nice thick texture and weave. It's got the weight. It fits me really well. And um, that is why I, this would be something that would definitely stay in my wardrobe. Okay, so the very first thing you'll notice is that this basically has a pretty neutral background, kind of an oatmeal color with flecks of navy and umber and some blue, some of that mustard color. It just has so much texture and color already built in. It has a very nice, thick, tight stitch. It has some change in stitch at the drop's shoulder and down a little bit on the sleeve and at the waistline. It fits me more with a cropped fit. I did buy this in a little bit of a smaller size. Again, it is 100% cotton and just the weight and texture and color of this sweater made it an absolute perfect fit for me, perfect piece for where I wanted to head with my wardrobe. So I hope this was helpful and kind of showed how you can choose items across varying price points with very similar details using kind of the same criteria to weigh and measure what you want to add to a small wardrobe for yourself. Of course, it's very personal and things that matter to you might not matter to everyone else, but things to take into consideration are fiber content, where you live, how you're going to use the item, what the rest of your wardrobe looks like. There's just so many personal aspects to weigh, but there's also so many things that consistently across the board will help you choose a key piece to add to a small wardrobe. I'm hoping to do more in this series, so if you liked this video, if you found it helpful, I would love it if you would just give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will be adding more in this series. I plan to do a sweatshirt one, and maybe possibly a denim one coming up. Um, if there's items that you'd like to see me cover or brands, again, just leave me a comment. I'd be happy to do that. Follow along for more fit videos and small wardrobe as I work on building my small sustainable wardrobe. And I hope that you guys follow me on this journey. Have a good one.